Welcome to this week's edition of Coach Prep. Coach Don and I are together in the Cherokee Batting Range Podcast Studio getting ready to record episode number 238. We're going to talk about helping our players staying in the play and staying involved in the next potential play rather than worrying about whether or not the call was correct, play that was just made. So that's a long-winded way of saying that we're going to be talking about making sure the kids stay in the game. So before we get into that, though, let's talk about our sponsors. Let's talk about the Anderson Bat Company. Everything Fast Pitch is very proud to have Anderson Bat Company as our presenting sponsor. Anderson Bat Company is using the latest and greatest bat technology to corner the market in the fast pitch world. They have the minus 9 rocket tech, the minus 10 carbon, and the minus 11 carbon light. Anderson Bat Company is using this technology to put a high-performing bat in the hands of hitters that really know the difference between a good bat and a great bat. We're also working with Anderson to provide a discount for all of our listeners. Go to the Anderson Bat Company website and order your bats. Use the EFP20 discount, which is for everything fast pitch, and you'll get a 20% discount. And make sure you take advantage of that EFP20 discount. It's a great way for you to save that additional 20% on a great product, and it also helps to support the podcast at the same time. Also, if you can, become a patron. Go to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. Something that Coach Don and I really do appreciate, the patrons that we have, the people that have been supporting this podcast for a long time. We would love to see more people come on board. So if you're in a position where you can help to support us, we're talking about $5, 10 or $20 a month. And again, thank you very much to our existing patrons. But please come on board. It's patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch. So Don, Dan made a good point. And I've talked a lot here in the last few weeks about while I've been on my recovery, having a chance to watch so many softball games on TV. And uh, we're going to talk about replay uh, more in depth in next week's edition of Everything Fast Pitch. But what I want us to talk about is how the love of the replay and being able to have calls reviewed at the college level is setting a tone that I think is a really negative one where players are so busy worrying about what just happened that they're not staying involved in what else is going on in the game. And so, you know, we were talking about a situation where a, a third baseman made a tag at third, thought she made the tag, and, and rather than thinking about and worrying about other base runners, was so busy making sure that her coach knew that, you know, that this play needed to be reviewed that she stopped playing completely while the hitter jogged over to second base in a situation where if they had made the play on her, would have been the third out of the inning anyhow, and no runs would have scored. So what ends up happening is we end up with the review. The umpires are correct. We have a runner at third, and now we also have a runner at second that we could have made a play on because we were so busy doing the earmuff sign to make sure that we reviewed the first play that we forgot about the second play. No, that, that again, they're caught up in the moment and the excitement. I guess idea that the the call was wrong kind of makes you feel like it's an automatic timeout. Right. And everybody has to freeze where you're at until we deal with this thing, right? But reality is, is and even in other cases, whether it's a ball four walk or being in tune with what's going on right? when it was really only ball three. And, you know, there's all kinds of little things. And, you know, we talk about communication and letting people know, you know, how many outs there are, what the count is being very in tune with what the situation is at the moment uh, is so important. And again, if, if the other team takes advantage of us snoozing or being excited about a replay or something like that, you know, good on them. Right. Well, and now obviously the vast majority of our coaches are not in situations where they have to worry about replay. Right, right. But so I think the moral to the story, though, is really stressing to our players and really working in a practice setting on the secondary play, the follow-up play. If we make a throw to the plate, and we try to tag the runner out at home, that as soon as we've made that play, there's other base runners, there's other things going on, there's other ch- situations that potentially could create opportunities for us to get outs and to make plays. Just because the coach runs out to appeal it or whatever, it's not meaning that there is time out yet. Right, and, and until time is called, yeah. those runners that are moving are at, at risk of being put out, and we need to start to drive home the point to our players and make sure that they understand that Yes, there, there's always that primary play. There's always that first thing that happens, but there's always going to be other things, other opportunities as the game unfolds. If we can start to make that point more clear to our players, make sure that they're really thinking about, well, if this happens, this is play number one, but I have to also think about where's the second runner, where's the third runner, you know, what could be going on in other situations, other things that could be giving us opportunities to make plays. And the very best teams are always the teams that are are aware enough of what's going on that they can make a play on that trail runner, that they're not afraid 
you know, to throw the ball, to try to make a play on a secondary runner or something like that, because they just know that those opportunities are there for them to do something positive. And they're, they're playing much more of a, a big picture game than, than I unfortunately think a lot of players are starting to learn how to play. No, I, again, and those are really heated moments. They're usually pretty intense times. So right. that's not when we want to falter. Again, like you said, just to, to make sure everybody understands that, you know, there is a, a next play or there is a, another thing going on. They'll sort it all out in the end. Right. And the one thing you mentioned earlier, Donnie, we talk, and we talk about communication all the time. And to me, one of the things that separates great players from good players and good players from average players is that ability to communicate and honestly to plan, you know, to kind of think about things in advance. So if you watch most teams, there's very little communication. Players aren't really talking much at all during the course of the game. But what we want to start to see more of is players really having a plan in their mind of what's going to happen. And I think for most players, it stops. Let's say there's a runner at first and I'm the shortstop. They go, okay, ground ball to me, I go two. And sure. we, that's like the only thing that we think about. That might work out. You, know, you might get a, you know, a nice sharp one hopper and you get a, you know, an easy hop and that play could go to second base and maybe we turn a double play. But if my shortstop's doing a really good job, what they should be thinking about is, all right, I have a runner at first, but she's really fast. If she steals and the ball gets hit to me, I can't go to second anymore because she's going to already be you know, on top of second base. Now my play has to be to first. If that same runner isn't stealing, but it's a slow roller and I have to charge it, now do I still have a chance to get a play at second base with that really fast runner? If I can't get the play at, at second base, what's my next play going to be? And starting to think about it that way versus the ground ball goes two, fly ball goes three, or whatever it is, kind it's of kind really of fundamental thinking that the kids experience. Kind of softball IQ, right? Right. We've got to help develop that. Yeah. But I think we need to practice more of it. So setting up situations in practice coaches where you actually have that trail run and, and you know, helping, let's say your third baseman does try to make a tag on a, on a runner going first to third. Whether she makes the tag or not, whether she gets the out or not, that she's popping right up and thinking about, hey, I got that girl going to second. I can make a play there. And starting to you know, set those situations up, help them see it more, experience it more. So instead of it being this mystery on game day where all of a sudden the runners are running around like crazy and they have no idea what's going on, that we prepare them a little bit more for it. And the example we used in the college game of the player was so worried about the replay that she let a secondary runner get into scoring position. And then, of course, the next girl gets a hit and they get a, a walk-off two-run. They go up by yeah. one rather yeah. than a tie. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a walk-off. The runner at second that she could have potentially gotten out for the third out is now the winning run for the other team. You know, that's an extreme example, but I think it's a good one for players making sure that they stay in the game, thinking about the secondary play, making sure that they don't stop playing until there's absolutely no possibilities to get an out. Practicing this stuff, Tori, helps everybody kind of anticipate what right. should happen. Catchers, the, maybe the field general that are making the call on where the cut should go, and you know, all those types of things need to be practiced because right. it's a, an anticipative skill that uh, has to be developed, and you can't just talk about it and expect for it just to work. What you just said is, is really crucial. So then if my... Third baseman knows she's going to potentially be throwing to second to get a secondary runner. Well, then my outfielders better be thinking about what their jobs are for where they should be backing up, right? Absolutely. But it's also a chance for my base runners to work on seeing what's happening in front of them so that they get a chance to um, you know, sneak in and maybe steal an extra 60 feet by being aware of opportunities to advance. And so I think it's a win-win-win situation. So quick little follow-up. I know a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, how frustrated I'm getting watching runners tag up at first base on deep fly balls. Right. I watched a base runner cost a hitter a home run in a college game the other day because uh -oh. the runner at first went back to tag up at first. The hitter was kind of half paying attention watching the ball go out of the park. She passed the runner who was tagging up at first, and so she got called out, and her home run got erased. Oh, so no. don't tag up at first unless you're 100% <laughs> sure. It's going to get caught. If you're not 100% sure it's going to get caught, go halfway. So quick little uh, add-on to something we talked about a couple of weeks ago. So that's going to wrap up number 238. If you have ideas and topics, things you want us to talk about, make sure you reach out to us at everythingfastpitch at gmail.com or fastpitchprep at gmail.com. Please make sure you support the Anderson Bat Company. Become a patron if you can by going to patreon.com slash everythingfastpitch and go to the fastpitchprep.com website, order your Square Cuts training disc, Check out the YouTube channel and also the uh, blog post. There's tons and tons of information available for you. 
on our uh, website at fastpitchprep.com. So for Coach Don McKinley and our producer, Stan Lewis, this is Coach Tory saying thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.